months after the gang of six made an 11th hour pitch to save budget talks. But Senate leaders say it may be too little, too late. With us now, Republican Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey, a member of Budget and Banking Committee. Senator, welcome. Thanks so much. Thanks for having uh, me. A number of Republicans have now come on board and have endorsed the idea of some revenue measures, some of the proposals, the ideas that are in the Gang of Six as a starting point. Uh, Lamar Alexander came on board. We heard from other Republicans. What say a few? Um, I'm, I'm concerned about this approach. Uh, I'm concerned at several levels. One is uh, it looks like, it's, it's hard to understand because there's uh, a little bit of a lack of specificity still. There's no legislative language, but it looks like what could be a pretty big tax increase. And the spending cuts, I think, are, are highly uncertain. What it does is it instructs the various committees of the Senate and the House to come up with these spending cuts. <clears throat> We have no assurance that they will do that. Uh, we have no idea how they'll do that. And then, and then it's we ask the Senate to vote on that. Um, all of which suggests to me there are a number of ways in which this could all fall apart. So, I, I give these guys all the credit in the world for uh, for really struggling and trying to make some progress on a tough issue. But there's no assurance that it results in an outcome. And if we can't agree on spending cuts now, why should we suppose that at the end of this process, which after all has been available to us? For two years now, the Senate won't even pass a budget. Uh, why we think that this will result in real spending cuts, not clear to me. Well, there's uh, the other dynamic here is the McConnell Reid proposal, right. and that is going to get to the floor at some point. Now, the, the idea being that the Gang of Six proposal <laughs> is too late to be scored by CBO to really be Probably put right. into legislative right. language with only 13 days to go. So there is this emergency fallback measure, whatever you want to call it, which would have some teeth in it because down the road the president would be forced to make some tough decisions. How, the, do, the how would you do that? The, the, <clears throat> the McConnell well, I have to disagree. I don't think there's anything binding about it at all. The only thing the president would have to do under so that you're proposal. You're against it right now. Well, look, look, what, look what it does is it it empowers the president to raise the debt limit on his own. He would be required to make some recommendations about spending cuts, but it would not be binding. Uh, there's nothing that's assured about an outcome here except a higher debt ceiling increase. Um, now, this is what the president's wanted from the beginning, a debt limit increase with no conditions, but I just don't think that that's acceptable. I, I think, actually, uh, we could be in for big, big trouble if we raise the debt limit without cutting spending. The, the markets but are expecting in, real cuts in spending. I mean, 62 percent of Americans <laughs> in the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll say that you're in more trouble if you don't raise revenues, that in fact the debt ceiling should be raised. Oh, I've always said the debt ceiling needs to be raised at some point. I don't think there's any dispute about that. The question is, do we just go ahead and do it without fixing the path that we're on? We are on a totally unsustainable fiscal path. But if it's path. too late, Senator, to fix the path permanently, to, to do the big deal right <clears throat> now, you've got 13 days. The markets, the bond markets, you're here, you've had all these warnings the, from the, let's, the rating services. Let's be very clear. The rating services, the markets are not so much worried about what happens on August 3rd. What they're worried about is whether we're going to grapple whether we're going to start to fix the fiscal imbalance that we have, whether and we're going to correct this problem. What about the fact that, according to our polling at least, the president seems to be winning the message war well, and, and, and yes. has persuaded and, and Americans that it is important to do something about the about taxes? The president has done a good job mischaracterizing Republicans and caricaturing what we're about, but I think that changed last night. Last night, the House voted for a bill that basically says, Mr. President, here's the full debt limit increase that you've asked for, provided only that you help us reach a balance budget. I think that's an extremely reasonable position but to take. What, it's not going to pass the Senate. Well, wait, wait, why, why do we assume? I was told that it couldn't pass the House just a few weeks ago. I was told repeatedly that there's nothing. So let me just ask you hypothetically. Once it is voted on, let's assume it doesn't pass the Senate, would you then move on to some sort of compromise and would Wait you consider I, McConnell I, 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 I'm not going to walk away from what just passed the House and I want to ask the President a simple question. The President has said catastrophe will result if we don't raise the debt limit. The House has just offered him the debt limit increase he wants, provided that he will join us in putting our government on a path to a balanced budget. Why can't the President accept a path to a balance? President Clinton did. He accepted the idea and actually achieved it with Republicans in Congress. So I think we should be flexible about the timing of it, about any level of spending caps, which things get capped, how. All of those things are absolutely reasonable topics for negotiation. But why does the president so oppose reaching a balanced budget over time that he's willing to thrust the country into this chaos? That's, what I, that's a question I'd like to, to hear an answer for.
Well, you're going to get that answer, I think, from the White House. I more. hope so. I haven't Thank heard you it very yet. much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's good to see you, Senator. And the new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll that we've been talking about shows some growing support for raising.